This is The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Mexico has some of the world's largest and most accessible offshore oil fields. Its shale resources are even bigger. The U.S. imports over 18 percent of its oil from Mexico, making it the country the U.S. depends on for oil, followed by Canada. According to our next guest, the Clinton emails released by the State Department on July 31st indicate that under Hillary Clinton's leadership, the State Department helped to break the Mexican government's control of the country's state-owned oil and gas company, Pemex. This means opening up the industry to international oil and gas companies, paving the way for a huge expansion of offshore drilling. With us to discuss his investigative piece, joining us from Madison, Wisconsin, is Steve Horn. Steve is the editor of the Smog blog that just published an exclusive titled Hillary Clinton State Department emails Mexico energy reform and the revolving door. This story is on the front page of the most prominent independent news outlet in Mexico, La Jornada, which refers to Steve's investigative piece in the Smog blog. But to date, we have not seen it covered in any major U.S. news outlet. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here and good to talk about this, uh, this article on a U.S. news outlet for the first time. So, Steve, let's get right down to it. Um, according to your piece, Hillary Clinton's Department of State is the Trojan horse behind privatizing Mexico's oil and gas industry. So how do we know this and who are the key players and how did they go about doing this? Well, the impetus for um, this story is that it was already something I was looking into. Um, and it kind of probably is obvious for people who read it because it refers back to older WikiLeaks cables that point to some of the, the uh, I guess, the, the findings uh, in the article. But um, the hook is actually the Hillary Clinton emails that just recently came out because of the um, ongoing rollout of the emails that uh, Jason Leopold of Vice News made possible for his, uh, via his lawsuit, which is uh, Jason Leopold v. Um, U.S. Department of State. And basically the the Hillary Clinton uh, emails uh, that made this story possible were the ones that were on her private server, their private email address. And of course, these emails are about things far uh, broader than just the topic that we're going to talk about today. But um, I'm interested in this topic because that's my beat. And uh, these emails are easily searchable uh, via the State Department's website. So what I did is started searching. And I search for things like um, fracking or shale or energy or anything like that. And one of the things that um, has popped up both months so far of the rollout are things on this international energy coordinator position, which was created actually originally under the Bush administration. Um, but uh, under the Bush administration, didn't really touch oil and gas. They were dealing more with biofuels in Brazil. Um, what happened uh, when Clinton became the head of the State Department is uh, changing of the guard, hires a new international energy coordinator, and the first one hired um, is a guy by the name of David Goldwyn, who is one of the, what I call the trio in my story, um, one of the three people that I consider to be uh, the most important uh, because of all their connections to different think tanks and uh, banks, um, private equity firms, etc. cetera. Uh, consultancies. And uh, David Golden becomes the first international energy coordinator. And the emails, going back to the Hillary Clinton emails, uh, first of all, um, the international energy coordinator uh, job description is actually up as part of those emails. But unfortunately for uh, everyone who might be interested in what that job description might be, it's completely whited out by the State Department, completely redacted. So we don't actually know how the State Department described that job. But that job ended up going to Goldwyn, who um, uh, basically before he came to the State Department and now after is a consultant for the oil and gas industry and an attorney. Uh, in the book, uh, The Secret World of Oil by Ken Silverstein, he's referred to as a fixer. Uh, and this is basically a role that he's played throughout his career. He goes into other countries, in this case Mexico, in other cases uh, different dictatorships around the world, and, and opens up uh, their country to 
uh, often United States oil and gas companies like ExxonMobil, Chevron, et cetera. So Goldwyn, um, you can see his name in some of these emails. And you can see in one of the emails in particular, um, it mentions that one of the top things on his agenda is going to be dealing with the situation in Mexico, um, which um, it's some of that email is also redacted. But looking at other contexts, looking at the WikiLeaks cables and looking at his name in those WikiLeaks cables, um, it becomes very clear that he was a central figure um, working for the State Department, uh, kind of planting the seeds of energy reform for the Hillary Clinton State Department, and eventually uh, moving forward, leaving the State Department after a couple of years as international energy coordinator, going back to his private consultancy and uh, bo doing both legal work and think tank work at the Atlantic Council and the Brookings Institution, which are both uh, you know, all these either clients for the law firm at Sutherland or oil and gas industry funding for Brookings and Atlantic Council, making the case for energy reforms in Mexico. So within, so by 2013, fast forwarding, um, after Clinton leaves the State Department, in December 2013, these constitutional reforms were passed uh, by the Mexican government, um, opening up the uh, oil and gas industry in Mexico to international companies to do things like fracking in the Eagle Ford Shale or deep offshore drilling in the Mexico side of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the question is, is this inconsistent with the U.S. foreign policy, which actually calls for the liberalization of not only the energy sector, but all sorts of industries? So what's wrong with what they did? It's completely consistent with the policy. Um, and it, it raises questions about how, you know, what role did the State Department um, and other parts of the United States government play in the broader, uh, I think it's neoliberal reforms in Mexico? Uh, this was, energy was only one piece of what's called uh, El Compacto de Mexico, or the Compact of Mexico, which was privatizing other sectors besides energy. Energy um, itself is something that, of course, um, this isn't just the State Department calling for this. My article outlines that. This has been a years-long push for um, what uh, think tanks and institutions like the Council on Foreign Relations or uh, banks like um, Citigroup and Goldman Sachs and others have called uh, integration, integrating entire North American oil and gas industry into basically kind of one unit or one pool that's easier to manage for capital investors and for a big oil, in particular ExxonMobil, and the big players. Um, and so, um, yeah, this is completely consistent with that push. Um, Steve, and Steve, let's take this up and also Hillary Clinton's specific involvement in segment two. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.